Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for episode number 40 of our West Ham United FIFA 15 career mode and uh, just before we start I want to massively thank you for the support that I've been getting recently in terms of subscribers if we could smash 50 likes yet again on this career mode episode that would be absolutely awesome last episode we played three BPL games against Everton, Watford and Sunderland and got two draws and a win but in today's episode we will be playing against, uh, against Stuttgart so the home and the away leg of the round of 32 knockout stage in that tournament and we are supposed to be playing Chelsea in the Capital One Cup final. As you can see though in the background just before we get into the Europa League first leg round of 32 tie against Stuttgart just getting in the mood with a few stats in the background. It's actually Stefan El Sharawi who is actually the top goal scorer in the Europa League at the moment and as you can see Mesut Ozil who was top of the Barclays Premier League assist makers is actually top of this one too from Arroyo. Luke Garber interesting enough. Zarate is actually in there in sixth place. Uh, if you didn't see on the goal scorers list. Alan Traore is actually up in the top 10 I do believe with five goals uh, after that hat trick that he scored in against Genoa sorry in the group stages of the competition. So he's doing a very good job in the Europa League. Uh, as you can see Lasse Schoener is now happy with his position at the club. He was a little bit disappointed with the lack of game time he was getting but at the moment he's pretty much my main winger so uh, yeah so th uh, don't worry about it Lasse because you're performing very very well. Now it is time to get into the first game though of this episode. The way it's supposed to work is we'll have the first leg of this round of 32 tied in the second leg and then we'll play Chelsea in the Capital One Cup Final. Or at least we're supposed to. We'll get onto that a little bit later on. But now it is time for the first leg. We are walking out onto the pitch here against Stuttgart. A few changes made. Karen Reckitt coming into the side again to replace Winston Reid, who's fallen out of favour at the end of the season again, like he sort of did last year. Now you can see the formation: 4-2-3-1. Delph and Koyate both as defensive mids, with Scherner and Draxler as the wingers. Van Alden as an attacking mid, and Diafra Sacco up front. But it was actually Stuttgart who would get the first chance of the game. And what a save it is from Skuffe from Ibisevic has shot the rebound there as well well blocked by the defender and just about hanging into this game. So the first chance of the game going to Stuttgart and what a chance it was but now Diafra Saka is bursting through, he's gone past Konstantin Rausch here, the challenge is in but he somehow drags it wide, did all the hard work and then drags it wide but as you can see at half time it was in fact 0-0. Vincent Abubakar now going forward in a very very quiet game in the 80th minute but it's a good save from Sven Alright. To deny the Cameroonian, but as you can see, Vinaldo now picking the ball up. He's going to put the ball over the top for Abubakar to run onto. He outstrengths Rudiger and he puts it over. That's Sven all right there with a sort of half volley, one on one, and we have the lead away from home. This is the away tie, so the second leg is at home, and we take the win one nil with that goal with just five minutes to go in probably the quietest game of this season so far. Simone Scuffy uh, getting man of the match after that incredible save early on to deny Stuttgart from taking the lead in the first 15 minutes with a 7.7 .7 rating. Good ratings as well for Abubakar and Vinalden after getting goals and the assist respectively but as you can see from that game Fabian Delft actually got an injury and it's a three-week injury he sprained his ankle which means he is now ruled out of the Capital One Cup final against Chelsea so that is a huge thing because he was going to be a very very important player for that game but as you can see in the background you guys in the comment section last time it was my question of the day you told me to accept the France offer it was actually close no one said Poland again it was, it was Chile or France. About three people said Chile, but a load more people said France. But as you can see, we're now going to not get ready for the second leg of the Stuttgart game because a match has been rescheduled against Spurs to two days after they told me it was going to be rescheduled. So no Capital One Cup final in this game, uh, in this episode, sorry, because this game is ridiculous. So we've been given two days to, pre pre to, uh, to prepare, sorry, for a game against Tottenham two days before the Stuttgart game, which is absolutely ludicrous. But we now play third in the league Spurs in a game we just didn't know was going to happen until two days before. As you can see, there is the squad in the background. Grognier coming into the side to replace Vijnaldum. It's actually going to be a 4-1-2-1-2 formation with Delph out injured because he can't play the defensive mid. So Draxler and Schoener as the wingers, but Zarate and Abubakar playing together up front as the two strikers. As you can see, Draxler there cutting away from the defender. He's going to go for the strike from the edge of the area. And what a strike it is in just a seventh minute through the legs of Eric Dier. Brilliant Ronaldo chop and just on the edge of the area. Blasts it. 
past Hugo Lloris. Fantastic goal from Julian Draxler. Only his second for the club. And it's a brilliant way to get it. To give us a 1-0 lead. But just two minutes later, Andros Townsend putting the ball over for Emmanuel Adebayor. And on the half volley, he manages to equalise in just a ninth minute. Br uh, brilliant goal from Emmanuel Adebayor to even things up. Just two minutes after we took the lead. So an absolutely mad start to this game with two goals in the space of three minutes. But uh, just kicking things off. Looking for an immediate response. And Lasse Schoener gets the ball. Nice little ball there around the corner to Cheka Koyate, who goes past Carl Walker very easily. Finesses it in past Hugo Lloris. And it's 2-1 after 11 minutes. Three goals now in the space of four in-game minutes. And it's 2-1. We now come back straight in with the immediate response. Now Ericsson with an outside of the area header. Forcing a fantastic save from Simone Scuffe. No, no clue how he managed to get that on target. Now Gronje going for our third. But he puts it just past the far post in the end there with the finesse effort. Now Kapue on the ball. He finds Adebayor. It's a lovely one-two between himself and Kapue. But it's a fantastic fantastic save yet again from Simone Scuffe to deny the French defence in mid but now Grogne over the top uh, sorry Grogne threw on goal after a fantastic scoop over the top through ball from Abubakar but he can't get it past Loris but now we do get it past Loris in the 63rd minute with a header from Julian Draxler getting his second of the game and his third for the club into the box from Grogne and yet again he gets another assist from a corner to make it 3-1 make it slightly more comfortable in this game now Kapue finding Lewis Holtby he gives it back to Kapue and it's deflected over the bar off Atsuto Achida in the end. Now Spurs going forward again with Pritchard giving it finally to Lewis Holtby and Holtby does score in the end. Somehow Scuffe doesn't get anything on it. I'm not going to blame him because he's made some brilliant saves so far this game. Probably should have done a little bit better with that. That does make it 3-2 but that is in fact how the game would end. We managed to see out the game and it's a crazy one. 3-2. Could hardly get my breath during that game. Goals and chances flying in all over the place. Cheku Koyate got man of the match. Another 7.7 .7 rating for Simone Scuffe. Good job from him. Good ratings as well from Draxler, Zarate and Clement Grogne as well. And what a performance to beat third in the league. A vital game in the race for fourth and potentially this race for the title that we've accidentally found ourselves in in the Barclays Premier League. But now it is time for the second leg. The second tie at home this time at Upton Park against Stuttgart. Having beaten Stuttgart fairly comfortably-ish away from home. 1-0 in the first leg. We'll be looking to win again in this one or at least get a draw just to be comfortable in this second leg we obviously can't afford to give them two away goals otherwise they'll go through on away goals depending on whether it, you know if it's equal on aggregate as you can see a slightly second string squad for this game because we're wanting to be careful for the capital one cup final which is just three days after this but we get the first chance of the game Sacco they're trying to go for the chip but it's over the bar over Sven Ulreich's bar and now Embola with some lovely skill there to get past the fullback cuts inside there goes for the near post strike but it's an easy save from Sven Ulreich going forward again now this time Diafra Sacco with an even better chance and it's a great save from Ulreich the follow-up from Ings is blocked by the defender and somehow we haven't scored yet. Now Stuttgart going forward, Harnick down the wing, it's into the box, Uchida has no chance and it's Hlusek, Adam Hlusek there, the winger from Stuttgart who gives them a very undeserved 1-0 lead. There's no way they deserve to be winning this game massively against the run of play and somehow Ulreich has not conceded again because we hit the post and it hits the back of Sven Ulreich and still doesn't go in. Now Morrison going forward at the end of the first half and another save from Ulreich who's Superman at the moment. Now Morrison threw again one-on-one -on -one against the German and again the German prevails. Brilliant save yet again. Now surely we've got to score at some point. We are massively dominating this game. Ings is going to put it across for Sacco and somehow... He's managed to save it again. Sven Ulreich is just not... He's just not in the mood for conceding goals. Now Stuttgart is surely going to deliver, deliver a sucker punch going forward again. But it's a fantastic save from Scuffe. Didn't really know much about it. And it's going to go to extra time because it's one all on aggregate. Both teams scored an away goal. Nothing happened in extra time, so we're straight into the penalty shootout. And Vincent Abubakar off the bench manages to put us 1-0 up as we took the first penalty, and he manages to coolly dispatch it. Now it's going to be Daniel Ginczek, who came on for Ibisevic halfway through the match, and he also coolly slots it in. I actually wanted Scuffe to dive that way, but I reacted too late, unfortunately. Now Diafra Sacco is going to step up for the second penalty and blast it high into the left corner of the goal. Fantastic penalty from Diafra Sacco. Now it's time for Stuttgart's second penalty, and it's Martin Harnick, the man who set up their goal. 
goal, and he's blazed it over the bar, Scuffey not having to do anything there, and we now have the advantage as long as Ravel Morrison can stick this penalty away, he sends all right the wrong way, and he gives us a 3-1 lead in this penalty shootout, now it's time for Constantine Roush, the left back, to step up, can Scuffey save it, no he can't, he gets sent the wrong way as well, and it's now 3-2, now it's time for Briel Donald Mbolo, the youngster, to try and give us a 4-2 lead in this penalty shootout, and he just about scores, all right went the right way, but in, in, in the end, it did hit the back of the net. Now we reach the point where Gentner here has to score for Stuttgart to stay in this penalty shootout. He stutters before he puts it in. Uh, he sends Scuffe the wrong way, and in the end, it's a cool penalty. And now it is all down to the star man of last season, Stuart Downing, to give us the win and send us into the last 16 of the Europa League. And he coolly does that, sending all right the wrong way. And in the end, we do get the win in this tie that we massively deserved. In the end, it was so much harder than it needed to be. We could have, to be honest, we could have won that game at least 5 or 6 1. Honestly, we had so many huge chances in that game. Not even just, you know, decent saves one-on-one -on -one or square saves it was absolutely ridiculous all right was on stupid form in that game and now we're going to leave it uh we're going to end this episode here with the table in the background as you can see we've only played one premier league game this episode so it hasn't changed too much we are down to fourth though in the premier league uh, on goal difference now just behind arsenal who were in third united and chelsea at the top of the table we still got spurs liverpool and city breathing down our necks especially with city having that game in hand so it's hugely close in the race for the top four the top two uh, united and chelsea starting to stretch away a little bit but it's so, so close in the race for the title and the race for the top four. So I hope you did enjoy that episode of Karima. Feel free to leave a like if you did and smash 50 likes. That would be absolutely awesome. We've been doing that recently. Again, as I always say, um, that's just absolutely awesome support. Feel free to comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. And subscribe if you are new around here as well. But it has been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye.